Have you used the new SAS Environment Manager to help monitor your SAS installation, but not really taken advantage of the dashboard interface? This video will get you started on how to plan, organize, and implement some of the most useful features of the dashboard to the SAS Environment Manager. I'm Dave Naden with SAS, and this video is part of the Technical Insights and Expertise series. This is part one of three, Dashboard Concepts. The dashboard is the first interface that you see when logging into SAS Environment Manager. Its purpose is to provide a place for summary information for the SAS administrator. The first go-to location to get an overall and quick assessment whether the platform is operating smoothly or not. This demonstration will show you several techniques for quickly customizing your own dashboard. Customizing the dashboard with some forethought makes all the difference in the world in determining how useful it will be for you. As an example, here's the dashboard after following just a few examples from this video. Before proceeding to customize the dashboard, the administrator needs to decide exactly which items should be displayed and how they should be displayed. In order to do this, every administrator needs to spend some upfront time asking themselves questions such as the following. First, which resources do you want to be able to constantly watch in terms of availability? And would it make things easier to group resources so that you can watch an entire group as one unit? If yes, then how would you group them? By resource type or by sets of components that are mutually dependent? or by some other business or logical criteria. Second question, what resources have some particularly important or interesting metric that you would want to be continually apprised of? For example, disk usage, CPU usage, page faults, TCP failures, and etc. Being able to answer this question intelligently requires that you spend some time becoming familiar with some of the most important metrics available for the various resources. A corollary to this question would be the issue of graphing. Would some of your metrics be especially suitable to graphing? The graph available on the dashboard provides a timeline for the metrics displayed, so if you want to see changes in the metric over the past 10 minutes or hour, for example, this is the perfect way to do that. Now the third question, how do you want to be informed when an alert fires? And does it make sense to group some of your alerts for monitoring? For example, do you want to be warned when any of a group of resources fires an alert? Or would you rather see alerts individually by resource? This can be a tricky question since the answer, in part, depends on how many alerts you expect, which in turn depends on some experience and trial and error with your particular system. Many alerts can probably be ignored, but you may want to be made aware of them. So for example, if you expect lots of alerts, then you may want to group them for easier viewing. You may also find that some alerts are too sensitive, causing them to fire too frequently, and may need adjustment to their threshold trip values, which in turn could affect your dashboard choices. In this demo, we will answer these questions for you in order to provide an example of how you might customize your own dashboard. Let's take a quick overview of how the dashboard is designed and configured. When you log on to SAS Environment Manager, the dashboard is the default interface, or it can be reached anytime from the uppermost left-hand menu item. It's built on two columns, with one set of portlets in the left column and a separate set of portlets for the right column. The portlets can be deleted or added back in, or moved up and down to modify the ordering on each side of the interface. For example, if I want to add a new portlet on the left side, I can simply select that portlet from my drop-down list here, and click the plus sign, and I now have the new portlet on the left side of the interface. Now suppose I want to move that one to the top, I simply grab the, the bar at the top and move it upward, and now that portlet is in the uppermost position on the left. Finally, if I want to delete it, I can simply click the X in the upper right corner of that portlet and take it out. So you can see how easy it is to arrange the different portlets on the interface. Each portlet has a configure button in the upper right corner next to the delete close button marked with the X. 
When configuring, you specify resources to display, time periods to cover, and other choices that apply to that particular portlet. For example, here I choose the Favorite Resources portlet, select the Configure button, and I'm presented with a menu which lets me add or delete resources that I want displayed in this portlet. Notice that I can filter on level of resource, type of resource, and even search by resource name using the menus here. Other portlets have very similar configuration interfaces, each with its own specific choices that pertains to that portlet. And finally, you can build more than one dashboard based on user ID or role membership. Thus, you could have specialized dashboards within one installation if you wanted to. This is done by going to the Select a Dashboard drop-down list. Currently, I'm looking at the SAS App Tier Role dashboard, but if I select a different dashboard, notice that I get a completely different set of portlets. By default, the dashboard comes with a total of 12 specialized portlets each providing a different view or set of data about the deployment that you're monitoring. For our purposes, we will eliminate several from this discussion because they're not directly related to monitoring. We'll concentrate instead on this set of seven. The Availability Summary, Saved Charts, Metric Viewer, Group Alerts Summary, Favorite Resources, Recent Alerts, and Problem Resources. One additional concept that helps in setting up your dashboard is the grouping of resources. You'll notice that there are several pre-supplied resource groups, some of which you can take advantage of. The groups can be viewed from the Resources Browse screen as shown here. In addition to the standard resource hierarchy of platforms, servers, and services, you can also see the following. Compatible groups contain two or more resources of the exact same type, such as all databases, all object spawners, or all SAS Environment Manager agents. Mixed groups contain any collection of resources that you want, though usually they're related to one another logically in some way. All SAS servers, all middle tier components, or all host platforms, and so on. In addition to the supplied groups, it's easy to create your own custom groups, which can be very helpful in giving your dashboard the focus that you need. To create your own new groups, you simply go to the Resources page and use the Tools menu New Groups and follow the prompts. You'll be asked the group name, description, and whether it's a compatible group or a mixed group, and then which resources are to be members of that group. This is the end of Section 1, Introduction to Making the Most of Your SAS Environment Manager Dashboard. To view other videos in this three-part series, click the demos on the screen. Thank you for viewing the video. Be sure to check back with the Technical Insights and Expertise series for more information, demonstrations, and examples of additional new SaaS technologies.